So if you're anything like me, then you love the smell of a good candle. You've probably had Bath & Body Works or Yankee Candle or some other candles burning in your home. What you may not know is a lot of them have paraffin wax in them, which is a petroleum byproduct. And for me, I don't want that in my home. So I've started making soy candles and that's what we're gonna look at today. Hey darling, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kiri Martin, and I am just a city girl who wishes she was a country girl who is currently living in the burbs. I love talking about all things micro homesteading, so planting, growing your own food, um, DIYs, which is what we're looking at today, um, and a variety of other things in between. So if that's something you're interested in, then make sure to hit the subscribe button below as well as the bell notification so that you will know whenever I post videos in the future. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about making soy candles at home. Now, I love getting those, or I used to love, getting those Bath & Body Works candles because they smell amazing. Um, but then I found out, and it's not just the Bath & Body Works, other can most candles too, they have a lot of paraffin wax in them. Um, sometimes there'll be a, a blend, and paraffin wax is a petroleum byproduct, so it's not really something that I want burning in my home. Now, I have burnt loads of these candles, but now that I know this, I can't go back. Um, so for me now, I've switched to, for the most part, making my own soy candles um, at home. There's something just warm and cozy about a candle burning, especially if you use wood wicks, which is what I like to do. Um, it just, cause then you get the little crackle of the wood, which I love. Um, but the candle with the right scent that especially cause scents can mean so much and evoke certain feelings and memories. Um, having, uh, the scent that you want in the candle is a very powerful thing. Um, so one of the great things about making the candles yourself at home, you can mix the oils and get different scents to find the one that's perfect for you, which is kind of cool. Um, so what I wanted to do today was talk about the soy candles that I make at home. Um, we will talk about both essential oils and fragrance oils. So before anyone out there comes at me on the internet, um, because people are very divided on whether you should use essential oils or fragrance oils, I'm just going to tell you a bit about both. Um, I have used both, um, and then I'll give the information and as always on this channel, you do what's best for you. With that said, let's take a look at some of the things that you're going to need. So I just wanna go through the things that I use when I'm making candles. Um, I will put the links to everything below so you can see the ones that I use. Doesn't mean they're the best or the only ones you can use, they're just the ones that I have so I can talk to the quality of them. For me, I always like to make my candles in little mason jars. I like these little Bernadine ones, they're little one cup ones. It's just a nice size, a nice, it's a nice size for a candle. So that's what I use for mine. I also have my um, digital thermometer, very important. Well, I use it also for soap making, in which case it's absolutely mandatory. I will put a link down below to my soap making blog post. Hopefully soon there will be a video to go with it, but and then at that point I will link it up above somewhere. Um, but for now, um, you just got the blog post. So. I use a digital thermometer because I had it for the soap making. I also use it for making the candles, which is important to make sure that the wax is at the right temperature uh, so that you can try and prevent cracking. It's just a visual thing, so if you don't have one, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's also important for getting the right temperature when you put the oils in so that you have the best chance of maintaining the most scent. Next thing you're going to need, well, I use a can. Um, just basic can. Um, I didn't have a saucepan that I wanted to just commit to the wax. So with using this, I can melt the wax in here and just put it in a saucepan with water. And then this is the only thing that gets waxy. What else do we need? We need the wax. So I got a bag of it on Amazon. I'll put the link below. I've actually found another place I'm going to try ordering it from. Um, but you want to get 100% uh, pure soy wax flakes. Uh, well, the flakes are just easy, they melt quickly. Um, so you wanna make sure that they are soy. So you will need that. And then you will also need your oils. So I have essential oils. This one is cedarwood. I think I had, I got a bunch of them. I also have one here that is fir needles because I wanted to get a kind of winter scent. Um, the other things that I do have as well is I have some fragrance oils. This one smells like Christmas Eve apparently. 
and this one is pumpkin patch so you know fall winter christmas whatever um so you're going to have to make a decision on which one you would rather use so what do you need to know actually before we get into that the other thing that you're going to need is wicks Okay, so if you're using the wood wicks, then you will probably have a little doohickey like this, which is gonna go in the bottom. And then you'll have your wicks. I've cut these to the right size to fit and stick out a little bit from my candles. I'll trim that later. Um, and then what you're going to need to do is carefully, I like to, if I can show this up here, kind of just pull them apart a bit um, beforehand so that you can get your little wood in there and then it's just going to slide in and that's going to hold it and then that will be what keeps it upright in the candle so we've got that okay so let's talk about um, some of the considerations between essential oils and fragrance oils essential oils are going to be a hundred percent natural um, they are going to come from naturally occurring um, things in nature that can provide an essential oil. So certain things are not going to give you an essential oil, things like watermelon, um, but like fir needles or citrus, uh, lots of things like that. Many herbs are going to be able to provide essential oils. So if you are choosing to use them while they are 100% natural, there is going to be a limited range of scents that you can use. Um, you will also find that they are going to be a lot more expensive. Now, even with them being a lot more expensive, unfortunately, even though they're a lot more expensive, you are also going to need to use a lot more of them in your candles in order to get the scent to carry. And even then, it's still going to be fainter than you will ever have pretty much with a fragrance oil. So for me, um, when I was doing my first batch of candles, um, I believe I used two pounds of wax and it was between 100 to 200 drops of essential oil. Uh, depending on the size of the bottle, that can be the entire bottle. Um, and the bottles are not cheap. So that is one thing to consider. Um, people have also raised concerns about them having a flashpoint. So I know in, I have a blog post on how to make your own dryer balls. I will put that below now that I've mentioned it. Um, and on that there, I always say that you should never use oils on your dryer balls. You should only use them if they're going into a cold dryer because they do have a flash point. Um, it's also a reason why I sometimes they will not ship them across borders. If from what I've seen, they are safe to use in candles. I have used them before. I have not had an issue. But if you have a concern, then don't use them. The other option that you have are the fragrance oils. This is a different one. This is pumpkin patch. Um, so pumpkin patch like that's a made-up thing so this is going to be a bunch of different scents that are there to evoke a feeling evoke um, a specific fragrance that you are not going to get an essential oil so this is if you want those watermelon candles you're gonna need to use a fragrance oil they're gonna have smells like bubble gum like um, anything anything that you can think of they're pretty much going you're gonna be able to find it in a fragrance oil if you and they're going to be a fraction of the price like this size bottle is going to be this one's also a fragrance oil but just for example this might be how much you get for an essential oil and this will be how much you might get for a fragrance oil so you're always going to get more in the fragrance oil than you will in the essential oil that said there are some things you're going to want to consider if you're using a fragrance oil so you're going to want to make sure that they are paraben free and you're also going to want to make sure that they're phthalate free i think that's how you say it i'm gonna check hang on Okay, so I checked and that is how you say it, phthalates. So you're going to wanna to make sure that they're phthalate free. Now, the other great thing about the fragrance oils, as I said, that you get, you're gonna get a lot more for your money, but the scent is going to be much, much stronger using a lot less oil. So for my candles today that I'm going to be doing, I am going to be focusing on the fragrance oils, um, also because I want to just try it out again um, because the last batch that I did were the essential oils so that's what we're going to do today um, if anybody else has any thoughts and I'm sure there will be lots um, you can put it down in the comments if you prefer to use essential oils if you prefer to use fragrance oils or I have heard sometimes people doing kind of like a mix of both essential and fragrance let me know in the comments below 
um, and hopefully I'm sure there will be a lively discussion. Okay, so I'm in the kitchen. I've put some water into a pot and I've put that on to boil um, and we're just going to leave that doing its thing. Then what we need to do is I've got my can. I am going to turn on my digital scale and there we go. So I have it in pounds and ounces. So I'm going to put my can on and then what you're going to do is you're going to use the, the tear button or the, on mine it says zero. So you can press that. Well, you have to actually press it. There we go. So it says tear. So what that's going to do is it's going to remove the weight of the can so that um, it will be able to just give you the weight of what is going in. Um, I discovered after filming the first part that this was the only base that I had for the wick. So I am only going to be able to do one candle. Luckily, one is enough to show you how to do it. So I have reduced my quantities. So I'm only doing a quarter pound of wax because that's what I need to fit in my jar. Typically, I would do it with a pound of wax and I will tell you the measurements for, for both. So I'm doing, it should be a quarter pound of wax. So we have right there, four, oops, okay, my finger was on it, four ounces. So that is my wax and I'm going to wait for that to boil and then I'll add that in there. And then for the fragrance oil, um, we are going to want to take it back to zero again with nothing on it. And then I have a little glass bowl and we'll hit tear again. And then I am going to measure out a quarter of an ounce of this because for every one pound of wax, I would typically use one ounce of fragrance oil. So because I'm only using a quarter of a pound, I'm going to use a quarter of an ounce. And then we'll just leave that um, to wait because we can't do anything with that until our wax is melted. So, okay, so the water's boiling. So I'm going to put in my can. It's pretty much we're making a double boiler. And we'll just leave that. I'm gonna go get a popsicle stick or something to stir it with. Um, and we're just going to leave that to melt. So the nice thing about uh, the flakes is they're going to melt pretty quickly. Um, you're going to want to keep this at about a medium heat and just give it a little stir just so everything melts up nice. And then once it's all melted, we will just turn it off, leave it in here and just monitor the temperature. We are not going to want to put the fragrance oil in until we reach about 185 degrees Fahrenheit. But we'll take a look at that with a the thermometer in a second. Okay, so the temperature is just about right, 185 Fahrenheit. So we're gonna go ahead and add in the fragrance oil. So we're gonna add that in. And then you're going to want to stir for two minutes. So we're just gonna do some stirring here. So I'm just going to stir for the full two minutes and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we're just about at 134, 135, depending where I click it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully take this out and I am going to pour it into my container. Yeah, we're good. Don't go burning yourself at this point. So we're just going to take it and carefully pour it in and like I said don't worry if the I don't worry if the wick moves around because you can always move it back afterwards in hindsight I probably could have done a little bit more wax but I didn't want to do too much because I only had the one wick so anyway so there we go filled up so we'll just leave that to cool and then later on I will trim the wick and that's it so you want to leave it um, undisturbed if you can overnight um, and that way it just lets it settle and then you're going to trim the wick down to a quarter of an inch and then you are going to want to not light it for at least four or five days this gives the scent a little bit of time to cure if you can manage to wait long enough if you can wait for about two weeks that would be ideal and then that will let uh, most of the, the you get the best scent out of the candle at that point 
Um, so it's worth being a little bit patient. So we'll leave this for a little bit to start to solidify and then I'll show you at the end. Okay, so it's the next day. I was actually good and left it undisturbed overnight on the counter. So I have it here, you can see it. And it, it smells amazing. It smells so much stronger than before when I've used the essential oils. Now my only problem is because I was only doing a little bit because I only had the one wick, I did a little bit less um, wax than I should have. I would have liked it to be filled up a little higher, which also would have made cutting the wick a little bit easier. So due to my frugalness in using up the wax and just honestly to keep the math simple, um, but in doing that, I'm going to now use some little curved nail scissors to try, which may not work all that well, to try, there we go, and get the wick to about a quarter of an inch. Okay, I have the worst cut wick ever, but it's down. So that's done, so that's good. So that's pretty much it. That's how I make my soy candles. Um, like I said, I have done them before with essential oils. If I'm doing essential oils, I was doing 100 to 200 drops. Um, and using the fragrance oil, I measured out um, in basically in equal proportions to what I'd done. So one pound of wax was one ounce of fragrance oil. And because I did a quarter of it, I just reduced that. Um, so yeah, so there you have it. I didn't get any cracking, which is nice. But yeah, so that's it. I am ordered some more of these wood wicks because as I mentioned, I was out. I don't even have a base for this one. So I'm gonna make up a bunch more candles. Some of them I'll do essential oil. Some of them I will keep with a fragrance oil and just see which one I end up liking when I'm using them around the same time. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, and until next time, just remember that homesteading is a spectrum and a journey. It is not a destination. And don't forget to make food grow.